Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Saturday, November 5th, and it is actually the evening of November 5th. It's about 9 p.m. Uh, right now. Um, I normally make these quite early in the morning, but uh, today was a busy day for us. We, uh, we had a few things to do, and the first chance I really got to sit down and relax a little bit and spend some time with you was, uh, was this time. Uh, and I tell you that because you're probably not going to see this until Sunday. I doubt that I'll get it uploaded uh, maybe very late this evening, but more likely tomorrow morning. And also, I am enjoying an adult beverage, so if you see me drink this, I don't want you to think it's my normal 7 o'clock in the morning drink. And you can see I am a true beverage snob. So, today um, I have my uh, Neurop pipe that I, that I showed you all uh, week or so ago. This is one of the ones that I picked up in LA and the tobacco has gone out because I had been futzing around with the camera. So I will relight that and then I will tell you what I'm smoking. This pipe by the way it smokes wonderfully. It's it's really it's very comfortable in the hand. Uh, it's it's light. I mean, it's easy to clench, no problem at all. And uh, it's got a, it's got a fantastic draw on it. I'm very happy with the Europe pipe. So what I'm smoking today is the tobacco that I've chosen to focus on for the month of November, and that is Three Nuns. And I've had Three Nuns before. I've had uh, quite a bit of it. Uh, and this tin is actually from, uh, looks like July of 2014, so it's been cellar, and I just opened this up at the beginning of November. And, you know, Three Nuns is, is a, a historically very interesting blend. It's been around for quite a long time. Um, at least, it's been, it's been manufactured for at least 120 years. Uh, but under various manufacturers and using various recipes and it has a remarkably complex history and I'm not even going to try to do justice to that. There was an excellent article written by um, Kevin Godby and I will link to that article below uh, and you can you can go ahead and read it if you have time. It's, it's, it's really a, a fascinating article when he goes into some memos that were sent between companies and information on the recipe and, and code words that are used in the industry for different components of the casings and things like that. It's just re really interesting read. But the bottom line is the history of Three Nuns is very difficult to decipher and it doesn't seem like anyone really knows what happened at each step of the way. The reason this became of interest at all was that this Three Nuns is actually a reintroduction of the blend, at least in the U.S., that uh, occurred back in 2013. Um, and that was actually when I first uh, had uh, Three Nuns. Uh, I, I never had any of the earlier incarnations. And there was a big to-do about the return of Three Nuns because uh, Three Nuns was, at least at some point in its history, a vapor. So Virginia Perique. And this is not. This is a uh, Virginia dark-fired Kentucky blend. And there are some that claim that it's therefore not true to the original recipe. There, there's some people that claim it didn't have Perique at different points in its life. Uh, apparently there's evidence that there was an artificial Perique used in it, and I didn't even know there was such a beast. Uh, so yeah, it's it's very complicated. I'm going to leave all of that aside because I, I never smoked any of the earlier incarnations. Um, you'll hear people say that this was the favorite tobacco of uh, C.S. Lewis. Um, this wasn't the favorite tobacco of C.S. Lewis. He smoked something called Three Nuns, but it was not this tobacco. And this is also not the tobacco that was smoked in the, in the mid-1990s uh, under this name. It's, it's a different incarnation. But despite all that, it is actually a very good tobacco that I am having difficulty keeping lit because I'm talking too much. But of course, if I wasn't talking so much, you probably wouldn't be watching me, would you? So, as I said, it is a, um, a, a Virginia Kentucky blend. It's uh, dark fired Kentucky. And it's what's called a spun coin. So the leaves are 
spun into a rope and probably matured for a while in that configuration. And then um, they're sliced into coins. So similar to what you see with, um, with a Scudo or uh, Deluxe Navy Rolls, uh, Peter Stokeby's Luxury Bullseye Flake, uh, those, that sort of a coin configuration. And I'll show you the tobacco here. And I, I have a few coins here on the top for illustrative purposes. So there's one. I'll give you an idea of what that kind of looks like. The tobacco itself, it, it's not really that nicely coined for the most part. Um, it gets packed in pretty densely and those coins tend to fall apart because they are rather thin. So what you wind up with is, is more akin in many cases to sort of a thick ribbon cut, you know, something like that. So it's very easy to rub out. And uh, I find, as far as I can remember, and certainly this tin, uh, is ready to smoke when I opened it. There's no need to dry it. Uh, I should have said earlier, this is being manufactured by McBaron. Um, and I'm not a fan of McBaron. Uh, I, th I, well, I won't go into why I'm not a fan of McBaron, but the fact is this seems to be an outlier for me. This is, this is tobacco that I really enjoy, uh, despite the fact that it's a, a McBaron product. And it is not at all wet, when, when, uh, to my liking at least. Uh, I think it's just the right level of humidity to, to smoke when it's opened. The tin note is uh, one of these notes that's very familiar. Um, and I'm going to be saying some things that, that almost sound like you would say about a Perique blend. So the, the closest I can get to describing what this tin note is, is it's almost like a Fig Newton, if a Fig Newton was a smoky flavor. Uh, for those of you that may not know what a Fig Newton is, it's a cookie that's made with mostly figs and a, a bit of a uh, doughy shell around it. I have no idea what Fig Newtons are made of. Uh, <laughs> but, but the middle of them is fig. And uh, yeah, it, that, that's kind of the sauce. So it's, it's a figginess, but it's also sort of a woody smokiness, uh, a little bit of hay-like quality to it, coming probably from the Virginias. The smokiness is definitely coming from the, uh, the Kentucky. And the flavor is is rather like the the tin note actually. So it it really does. It's got some of these dried fruit notes. Uh, when you first light it up, it's it's very uh, the, the sweetness and that sort of dry fruit figginess comes through early on. Um, you get a lot from the Virginias at the beginning of the bowl, and then it shifts over to the to the dark fired Kentucky. But it's the way the dark fired Kentucky is using this blend is really very unique at least to my palate. So I've smoked a lot of the you know popular dark fired incarnations that have been around lately, uh, the old dark fired and those sorts of things. And I see, I understand the appeal, but to me they're somewhat, um, somewhat mono flavored, mon monochromatic in taste, and a bit overpowering in, in the taste profile, I think. Like anything, when it's overdone, it um, it dominates the flavor, and you don't get to enjoy the, the complexity of it. This, however, it, it seems to be very well balanced with the Virginias, and while the Dark Fire Kentucky really does drive this blend, um, it's not overdone, and it's not to the point where I I find that it's it's making it impossible to taste the Virginias. Uh, so so there is this this complexity where the Virginias come in and out, you get the sweetness, then you get the smokiness, and it's just a re really nice smoking experience. It's, it, this is a really good uh, blend for retrohaling. Um, it definitely has that, that smokiness on the retrohale. There's a little bit of pepperiness on the tongue, not really on the retrohale. So it's not that wasabi perique type peppery 
but it's more of just sort of a spiciness on the tongue that I assume comes from the, the Kentucky. Um, and there, there's a, there, there's, a, there's almost like a, a woody, incense-y kind of flavor to it. Like a, a I, I don't, I don't really quite know how to describe it. It's not quite incense, but, it, but it's very woody and, and, and a spiciness that's not like a peppery spicy, but, but more of a incense-like spice. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's really quite a, a wonderful tobacco. So if you haven't tried it, um, I, I can highly recommend it. Um, it's it's a bit pricey. Um, all of McBaron tins are are a bit pricey these days, um, and I don't I haven't bought this in a while. I have quite a bit of it cellared, uh, but I'm guessing this is probably around thirteen fourteen dollars uh, for a tin right now. Um, but I I'd really say that it's worth it. And for me, it's it's a once a year treat. I I smoke this in November uh, always. Well, since 2014, so not always, but uh, I've smoked it around Thanksgiving. It's just something that I I associate these flavor profiles with with that holiday, and uh, that's how this became my tobacco of November. And uh, this is the first year that I'm really just exclusively focusing on you know one tobacco each month. Uh, but this one would always be open and, and available in November. So. If you get a chance to try it, I, I, I do highly recommend it. If you have tried it and uh, you know, want to share your thoughts on it, I'd love to hear what others think of the blend. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I hope this has been somewhat interesting and informative. And if you have a chance, do read the, um, the Kevin Godby article that I'll link below because it's, it, the history is it's just fascinating. And, and all the, the twists and turns that, that this has taken, and, and yet it's still... Uh, at least something called Three Nuns is still available today. It's, it's kind of a fascinating history. So another news, um, I don't really have a lot of, of things to update you on, so you probably noticed, or hopefully you noticed, <laughs> I did not do a shop update at all this week. Uh, I decided to take Wednesday off, actually take the week off, catch up on some other work that uh, desperately needed to be done and I am planning to do some a few different things in the coming weeks uh, and I haven't quite decided exactly what those are you know, I talked a bit about some you know, lessons learned as a pipe smoker type videos and you know, the first one that I've been thinking about doing is something on tamping. Um, and I know there's that not, I'm sorry, not tamping, packing. Um, and I know there's plenty of videos out there on different packing methods and all of that, but I wanted to sort of, in the sort of geeky, overly compulsive way that I tend to approach things, uh, talk a bit about my own theory on packing and, and why I think it's important to use a particular method over another method and, and so on. Um, now, of course, the bottom line with all these things is that the method that works for you is the right method for you to use. So I'm not trying to, you know, the the golden rules of pipe smoking and you must obey these or you're not a pipe smoker. That's silly. Uh, but just try to make something that other people might benefit from. So I will probably do that. I'll probably do the packing video and hopefully be able to put that together before uh, this coming Wednesday. It uh, won't be very long, just a short uh, overview of, of the topic. Uh, and I've got another, I don't want to talk too much about this, but I've got another shop project that I'm thinking about doing a series on that is not actually pipe related, but pipe accessory related. So we'll, we'll see how that develops. I believe I'm at the bottom of the bowl. That's a shame. It's a, it's a wonderful tobacco and it's always sad to hit the bottom of the bowl. So, I think that's about everything that I did want to discuss with you today. Um, I'll remind you that uh, this coming Tuesday is uh, Election Day. I don't think it's possible that you live in the United States and don't know that. Uh, <laughs> and we've talked enough about it, so just please remember to uh, exercise your right and get out there and, and, and vote. Make the country a better place one way or the other. 
And to all you folks that are not U.S. residents and are watching from afar, um, you're lucky. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Alright guys, with that I'm going to say goodbye. So I hope you all have a great week ahead. Uh, take care, and I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.